Hello everyone, my name is Adman and I'm a computer science student studying at City University of London and uh, in today's video I would like to give you my first year programming in Java module overview. So we'll talk about uh, requirements, tips and I'll show you a screenshot of my game, give you some advice and finally I'm going to be answering some, well all of the questions that you have asked me so far via email as well as YouTube comments. I hope you can hear me because I've been putting off this video for the last four days. Uh, because of the hot UK weather so I couldn't show this video because of the temperature and that's why today I've still decided to show this video and I got my fan on so it might be the sound the noise but yeah <laughs> I'll still make this video the first thing I would like to start with is requirement so what are the requirements to study Java at university level I want to clarify one thing here very quick so if you visit their website what they'll mention there is no previous knowledge or no previous uh, requirement or skills needed for this module in some sense they are lying I would say well they're not actually lying because what they expect you to do is attend uh, university lectures as well as labs as well as other activity if they have and in those 10 week or so week of term to learn everything about Java and I think that is very complicated so if you have any previous experience previous knowledge that's way better because you're gonna be learning you're gonna be absorbing much faster the information so that's why it's very important that you have some knowledge of Java or whatever programming language you, you'll be doing at university so what should you learn well I would have to tell you that take it easy so the jump between your college or sixth form to your university that summer try to chill relax spend time with family friend yeah so have some fun uh, but however at the final let's say a month or two weeks start learning the basic of object oriented programming language so the four main principle and some basic of java or whatever language you'd, you'll be studying at university whether that is python or c plus plus or c for instance so uh, the four main principle of object oriented programming language are encapsulation abstraction which means hiding unnecessary thing from user point of view inheritance which means when a class or object can be based on another class or object and finally we have polymorphism so that means having many forms so for instance a person can be like me for instance i can be a son i can be a brother i can be a teacher so one person me i can be different things so i can act i can behave differently in different circumstances so that polymorphism and finally also learn the basic of the language so for instance learn about variables methods scope so public private and uh, protected and also get uh, setters uh, arrays and so on it doesn't have to be too much so don't worry about i don't know mapping and all those crazy stuff but just try to learn that basic so that you know what you're doing and you have an, roughly an idea so you can get started you can have a good start at the beginning so that's important and guys one thing i did uh, last year i mean on my jump between my college to the university is the entire uh, summer i spent on building games is in buildbox so if you know, if you know buildbox buildbox is basically like wordpress so wordpress building for website and buildbox buildbox building game and the key difference here is that buildbox doesn't require coding so there is a bit of coding if you want to be add more custom feature but it's basically just drag and drop so that buildbox is and i spent the entire summer on the buildbox I, I created two games which i published on the play store so i wasted that summer so make sure not to waste your summer and learn something learn um, just get a head start on your degree so learn about java and other module as well okay so now i'll show you how my module was structured and a few exams that i had this is java module so in1007 programming in java and um, as you can see this is vle or moodle we call it place where you got all of your resources all of the exam all of the lectures and everything the first thing is over here we had about a uh, two hour of lecture per week followed with the two hour uh, tutorial or lab so that's about four hour on the second uh, term on the first term was about three hours so one hour of lecture followed by two hours of lab exercise and uh, so if I sc uh, just uh, scroll down over here so as you can see the assessment was uh, the following so I had a coursework on the first semester or first term so that was 25% of my module mark and uh, I had a project that was 50% of my module mark and this is the game yeah and finally i had one exam which was 25 percent of the module mark so the coursework pretty simple was just a viva as well as program submission so i had to make a program and submit so that was two sort of exam in uh, the coursework part over here and the project was uh, over here so as you can see the project consisted on uh, three 
submission so the first and second was 30% the, uh, the third one was 40% but yeah the project mark and this was a game yeah so the first on the first part I had to create some basic thing about the game so the world and characters and things like those the second part was about the uh, movement I think or something uh, and uh, sound and other stuff and the third part was uh, yeah so was all this complex stuff so things like throwing the bomb and other stuff as well <laughs> so I can't remember right now and uh, so that was the, pro the project part and finally the exam was uh, uh, online well this year was online but I think it normally would be uh, pen and paper in uh, university and uh, yeah so that was about two hour written exam okay so this was about um, the assessment as well as the timing for it okay so let me just scroll down and show you a module structure so I'll just go all the way down over here so uh, this part so uh, underneath uh, after the autumn content uh, thingy part over here these are all my first semester part and second semester was uh, this one so starting from over here and going all the way up to 10 week 10 and uh, yeah so what this means is that I had Java module that was uh, throughout the year so there was one whole long year module okay so on the first um, semester the autumn um, term in other words we talked about variables type and array on the first week then uh, condition and loops and then uh, methods and recursion introduction to object and classes life the life cycle of an object sorry the life cycle of an object and uh, uh, then there was a reading week so a uh, week off in other words so half term and then we had about immutable object and a class variables and collections and yeah so this was about seven uh, weeks of content. So as you can probably already um, guess that uh, the content covered in the first semester was not as hard and you can easily just catch up. So it's not hard, it's not tricky, you can easily get, get with it. And um, so my advice would be uh, roughly about um, week, I would say week six and seven. These two weeks are a bit tricky one because there'll be uh, many new things. So just make sure to you know uh, understand the content pretty well. So week six and seven will be a bit tricky, but apart from this first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, you can just easily catch up. So there's nothing new, there's nothing crazy. Um, okay, so this was about my first um, semester. And then we have the coursework. Well, we had uh, one multiple choice question exam, and we had uh, one uh, program to submit, and also we had one uh, oral assignment. So in total was 25 a point or 25%. And um, yeah, so this was about the first semester. And the second semester we did cover about, uh, we learned about uh, physics engine, which is an uh, engine from uh, City University, about inheritance and encapsulation, about interfaces, uh, abstract classes and event handling, about null pointer exception, which is a very painful thing. And I still struggle. Uh, yeah, so null pointer exception, object access and sound. And then on the uh, week five, we learned about typing, polymorphism, and game levels. So we have created um, uh, one big game that had many levels in it. So like Mario Kart, for instance. Well, Mario. Uh, okay. And then we learned about graphical user interface, and then uh, about timer and vinyl state machine. And then we learned about files, and then uh, exception, Java doc, and unit testing. So this is, uh, what this allows you to do is uh, create a documentation so that for you and for other programmer, they can read and they can understand the code. And yeah, so there, there was just nine uh, week of content. And then on the week 10, we had uh, exam preparation and some revision. And um, yeah, and these three are the link for project submission. So we had, um, yeah, so I had my group. So I had to submit the, the first part, the first chunk of my project, the second chunk and the final chunk of my project. I would like to say that lectures are recorded and uploaded on Moodle after about two days after your lecture finishes. Lectures are recorded and uh, tutorials or lab aren't. The first semester, as I said, was pretty straightforward, pretty easy, apart from uh, these two final weeks, which was pretty tricky one. However, the second semester was very, very tricky. So as you can see, we here, we are mainly talking about the game. So uh, here we are learning in our game. So building our game and learning, yeah, le applying many concepts on our game. That's why it was very tricky. And yeah, so that's about my Java module structure. The next advice I can give you is that difficulty is not gradual. You'll start from a very simple thing, from let's say variable, then you'll do um, loops, then you'll do methods, arrays, a constructor, getter, setter, scope, so on. But so at the beginning it will be linear difficulty. But then after some uh, lesson, some lectures, 
difficulty will literally rise like boom like that so it will rise drastically and things will get only harder and harder and harder so i kind of like to think about like a stock market for instance so stock market price is normal till a point and then boom all of a sudden it goes up but that also goes down but here it will not go down it will only go up so therefore i would like to stress you guys so do spend at least a couple of weeks before your university and learn the foundation of java because if you don't understand the foundation of java then first few weeks you'll do well at university will be fine but then afterward things will get terribly hard so do make sure to understand the foundation so again once i said uh, before so learn about the four main principles of the related programming language learn about what a constructor does what scope does and all sort of thing so learn the basic and that's all i'm asking you for Okay, now I'll show you the game that I have created, although just a screenshot, so you cannot see me playing it or anything, any attractive thing in it. Uh, because uh, the library that we have used, which is Physics Engine uh, from my university, is closed. So for some reason, I cannot execute my game. That is basically blocked. So therefore, uh, I was lucky enough, I, I took this, this screenshot months ago when I was submitting my game on uh, Moodle. So therefore, I can see my game and I can show you my level. So as you can see, this is my level 1, so the first level, and I have, I think, 4 or 5 levels in total in this game. If your game is simple, then create more levels. If your game is complicated, then just create a few levels, and that's that should do. On the first impression, you can say that it's a platform game. So we have uh, uh, 3 characters. So we have a banana, we have Mario, and we have the little tiny girl with the uh, rollerblade. So the actual character that I am is uh, uh, the Mario, which is the bottom uh, left-hand side. So I can uh, move left and right and I can jump and uh, I can throw a bomb as well. So I'll tell you in just a moment why I need to throw a bomb. The top uh, banana character, that is, uh, that gives me my extra points for that. And I can proceed to the next level if I hit, uh, if I collide with my, with the, my uh, banana character. And on the bottom right hand side, there is a tiny little girl with the roller blade. And that is my enemy. So if I collide with her uh, without throwing the bomb, I only get 10 points. If I throw a bomb to her and she dies, I get 20 points for that. So that's just something that I've created. So apart from these three characters, we have coins. So as you can see, right, right now I have six coins already in my game. And there are other coins which are uh, somehow um, raining from sky. Coin raining from sky? Okay, yeah, so they're, they're coming down from the sky at a, a different position and different time. And also, although I'm not sure if you can notice it very uh, well, but top center part, I have a, a cloud. And that is going to be moving left and right like that. So it'll be just moving just for, yeah, no purpose really. Okay, uh, yeah, so this is my game and it's very simple. So all you have to do, all Meyer has to do is uh, just collect those kind, collide, uh, coin, collide with uh, the characters, get the coins. So get all the coins, collide with the banana and then go to the next level. And also this game has audio. So there is a background sound playing all the time in a loop and then uh, the, when the, my character moves left and right it will produce a step sound and when it jumps it, it will produce a jump sound also when he collide when he throw bomb also will sound appropriately okay and on the left hand side what you can see is i have a control so i have a user interface so i can uh, mute my uh, all the sounds i can unmute and i can quit my game as you can see, it's not well structured, so the control label is not even centered enough. Finally, on the top right hand side, I have the coin uh, count label. So based on the uh, coin that I've collected, we'll uh, update the counter over there. Okay, and all these images in this game are all GIF apart from the cloud so and, and the platform. So all are GIF and all are moving, so that creates some sort of nice kind of um, effect. So once again, when Mario collects all the co uh, coin and then collide with the, um, uh, the characters, we'll go to the next level. And then next level, next level, next level, and we'll finish the game after fifth level. Yeah, that's about my game. So as you can see, it's a very simple game, so nothing crazy, nothing um, too complicated. Well, it is complicated, but yeah, I haven't got the grade yet, so I can't really tell you how how much uh, I have scored for this. Now I would like to answer all of the questions that I have received by email as well as by YouTube comments. So the first question: What is the minimum attendance for this module? Well. This year, everything was delivered and collected online, so therefore there was no control, so they couldn't monitor us, our attendance, and therefore I don't know what the attendance is, so um, I can't really tell you what the attendance was for this module. I have never been to university in person, in lectures, so therefore I have no idea what the attendance normally is for any other module, so I can't even, even guess the attendance. Sorry for my lack of uh, knowledge on attendance, and let's go to the next question. Will they teach you from scratch, or will they expect you to know something? 
Well, I have answered this question already in this video, but I'll be more than happy to briefly re-answer it. So, um, yes, they'll start from scratch. So they'll start from variable, then they'll go to a list or arrays, go to scope, we'll go to constructor, methods, loops, and so on. But however, is a very good idea to already know all of this stuff beforehand because things will get harder and you will not be able to catch up. And uh, that happened to me and I still struggle in some part on Java. So therefore, it's an absolutely good idea to learn this beforehand. So before going to university, uh, you probably can enroll to a course on Udemy. There are plenty of free courses on Udemy. Also, just watch many YouTube videos, just get an idea, read some uh, blog and stuff like that just to get an idea of what Java programming language is about and some idea on what constructor is or what a scope is or what uh, does a, a private uh, protected or a, a public does or maybe uh, how to create a method and what is a method so things like that just get an idea of what each of them does and that should give you a very solid base solid foundation to build further on it and also they don't expect us to have some programming knowledge so they expect us to be very much new to programming so they will start from a very simple thing. So you shouldn't be worried about that at all. But uh, once again, I do recommend to have some foundation, have some knowledge beforehand, because that will help you a lot. And last question, are you expected to be able to code to a better level later on in this course? It depends by what you mean better level. Because yes, they expect us to be, they expect us to be able to code in Java because we have to create the game. So therefore we have to be able to code. But however, they don't expect us to make, let's say, crazy stuff, let's say, I don't know, robotic um, things or um, Tesla autopilot uh, system. So they expect us to be able to code, but not to a crazy level. Yeah. So we don't have to be crazy engineer, crazy expert in that field. So by creating simple things that should do, so all they expect us to be able is uh, uh, meet the criteria agreed. So your program that you will create has to meet the checklist and that's it. You get marked for it. So they will not expect you to be crazy um, programmer. Yeah, simple thing should do. And that's basically it for this video, guys. I hope you like it and found it interesting. And if you did, please like and do make sure to comment if you have any other question or email me as well. So I'll be more than happy to answer your comment as well as email. So guys, uh, that's all for this video, guys. I hope you like it once again. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.